right. Hello, everybody. We are back with Bocho's brother, and I brought with me a friend, Yuan. He's one of my players, a.k.a. Broggy the Blade Singer. And we're going to be just talking shop today, talking Grim Hollow. Um, so, welcome to the Bocho's brother channel. Thank you. This is going to be amazing. And look at the setting. Yeah, it's big production value here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got my, I got my vampire seat here yeah we got this specially for for this uh for this podcast thing exactly yeah so uh we're in a campaign we called it the cold north because we started this how long ago two years three years ago yes yeah it's been quite some time hasn't it yeah 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 and we started it during the winter i think exactly yeah and that's initially i think what inspired uh what inspired the setting because the map the yeah. world of Etheris, we, we started up north. Uh, I guess that's also uh, based on the location where we're at in real life, actually. Exactly. We're in the cold north, we are in Sweden. We are the cold north. Yeah, we're, we're located in Sweden. So we were inspired to start the campaign here, in the where the Valakan tribes are. And uh, we just kind of started off with, uh, you guys were being chased by werewolves mm -hmm. through these woods over here. Decided to call these woods the uh, uh, Frost Fang Woods, I think, yeah, or the yeah. Frost Wolf Woods. Up, up for you to decide. And that uh, is actually a campaign that comes from the Grim Hollow book here. So we kicked it off with this one called Tavern of the Lost, from Fables of Etheris. And you guys were pretty new to Dungeons and Dragons. Mm, yeah, this was your first time playing. So, what was that experience like, just coming into D&D, &D, having never played before? Well, actually, like, I played a couple of times before with uh, friends, but uh, I never could get it, get it to be sort of a continual uh, thing where, where we had uh, a story that actually tied together for a long period of time. Maybe three sessions or something, and then somebody just uh, had other things to do in life, and and the game ended and the characters died, like not in the game, but they died as ideas. Okay. So we had to start off again. Uh, so I was super psyched when I uh, met you and I don't know why we, we started talking about this Dungeons and Dragons uh, getting and getting started because I got the idea that uh, yeah. you were dungeon mastering. And maybe, maybe I was wearing this shirt. Maybe, I don't know. Could, be I don't know. That. could be an obvious sign. So, <laughs> yeah. So yeah it all just kind of came together. Yeah. yeah, around the time Grim Hollow came out. Well, the characters sort of grow on you, um, and when you start out, you have a, an idea of what you want to do. So what, we went into Norse mythology and yeah. had uh, to, to pick some sort of an archetype for this character. And uh, I chose the god Draghi. Um, he was a fitting archetype for the bard, I, I think. And, yeah. uh, We've been tying in a little bit into into the Norse mythology and the way Draghi uh, is um, depicted in 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 the stories. Also, yeah. he has a sister, and his sister is this goddess Idun, um, who basically keeps the gods with. And she, mm, she helps them to maintain eternal life through through some apples that she. Yeah, she, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. It's a god thing. And, and uh, we're trying to tie this into the world here. Uh, not super obviously here. But, yeah. yeah. But because she had eternal life, the whole vampire setting down here in uh, Nor Oskoya and everything combined well with that. Yeah. And with the whole Nordic uh, mythology, there, some other characters have names like Heimdall the Druid, mm -hmm. or this Frost Druid. Uh, we have a guy named Kriki mm -hmm. from the Burak Empire. He's kind of this scrawny. Uh, he was inspired by uh, the character Bigby from Train Spotting. He's this barbarian guy from the Burak Empire, and uh, yeah, um, basically the campaign. I wanted to get it running quickly because there's so many cool abilities that you can get. Um, that you're always looking forward to, to, but like you said, you play a campaign for a month and then people move away and mm -hmm. you can't. So you guys were leveling up every week, every yeah, Sunday yeah. we played and it was level up. 
level up. So they were already level six, seven, eight. And as we moved, transitioned into the next adventure, which is also in the Grim Hollow campaign guide, we set it here in Runeheim. And in that adventure, um, we wanted to bring in uh, elements that aren't just hit points as you get reduced to zero hit points. We wanted an insanity, corruption, and madness system. And a lot of games have included that in different ways. So I've kind of come up with a system that combines uh, things like Shardolin or Delirium from Drakenheim, stone uh, onyx uh, crystals that if you touch them, you're going to get some insanity or corruption. Dying can increase your insanity and corruption. Uh, coming into contact with some kind of aberration. Mm -hmm. uh, if you fail a, a roll, wisdom savings throw. And so they have like three levels. Um, so they get three boxes and everybody's keeping track of, you know, I'm going crazy, I'm going a little crazy. And using the DMG guide, they roll percentile dice to see what effect happens. And in those first three boxes, it's just a 10 minute uh, kind of thing where they could be speaking gibberish or going completely silent or anything. Once those three boxes are filled, they go to the second phase that can last longer, um, as long as a day, a week. And then if those three boxes get checked and they're into the last seven, eight, nine, then they're talking about permanent uh, insanity. So um, you've seen this happening throughout the campaign. What What's your thoughts on having this as a, an additional element to the game apart from hit points, hack and slash, go through a dungeon, get the treasure. I think it really adds to the dimension of horror and uh, and the, the fear of the unknown that is part of the Grim Hollow, uh, what appeals to me from the Grim Hollow. Because I think the, the original game, uh, and a lot of other games for that matter, have you have a lot of comeback mechanics, and you're never really... I mean, you could die, but it's not... I mean, you have a lot of, uh, of safety valves to sort of uh, get away from that. Yeah. But in, in this style of gameplay, your character... We had, we had an accelerated growth <laughs> curve, sort of, yeah. with our characters, because they leveled up quickly and became extremely powerful, but then they also uh, became... Uh, afflicted with these insanities, these diseases, and yeah. you're still playing a strong character, but you have a lot of drawbacks that they sort of keep you in check. And at the end of the day, I think what kills you in this game is not is not what is not the things that you can see, but the the effects that what you do and what you uh, see in this world uh, have, but what what the effects that that is having on your mind. With the characters, none of us are, are sane anymore, yeah. and and it's we have these moments of role play where we just look each other in the eye and we go, it what? wasn't supposed to end like this, <laughs> and and it's yeah. and we're all just feeling it. Wow, that's there's nothing we can do. We can fight huge monsters, but we can't fight this. This is in our heads, exactly. and um, that adds to the flavor that is Grim 